Hi everyone, my name is Dal. I lead the data science team at Yotbo. And today I let you in on a project we are currently working on. Namely, I'll try. Namely taking a corpus of reviews and making it more digestible and explorable by our users. So before I start, let me introduce Yotbo. They are paying for my salary. <laughs> so at Yotpo, we help businesses to drive sales by collecting, handling, and leveraging the data generated by other users. Among the things we do is help them drive traffic through social by publishing reviews and images, get seen in Google with three snippets, and on Google Google seller ratings, and curate photos from Instagram. We serve over 200,000 businesses worldwide from different industries, as you can see here. So as I mentioned before in the title of this talk, we'll be talking about reviews. So how do we collect reviews? We collect, we collect reviews in two different ways. The first one is leaving a review on site. And the second one is by mail after purchase. What mail after purchase mean that you buy product, a few days later you get a mail from Yotpo to your mailbox asking you for a review and a star ratings. You fill it up, submit it, and then you're tagged as a verified buyer since you actually bought a product. So obviously we can use reviews to uplift conversion, build customer trust, but can we can use them in other ways one of those ways is gaining some valuable knowledge and information about what the likes and dislikes of our customers, to see what they think about the brand, the products, and our company. Now, we actually have customers that load everything into an Excel file and start searching for key phrases. It's an exhausting work, and it doesn't scale when you have tens of thousands of reviews. So we at Yopdoc came to the rescue and made a tool that allowed a, cor a corpus of review to be more explorable, more accessible for our users, which are the stone owner owners. So before we start digging into the solution, let's see what our challenges and requirements are. First of all, we like our solution to apply across industries. We don't have just hotels or just sports. We have all kinds of them. The second thing we'd like our solution to admit is to be applicable for both small corpora and large, large corpora alike because we have many small businesses working with us and we like our solution to apply to them too. It's really important to us. The third and the fourth is low maintenance solution and scalable solution. We don't want to tailor a solution per account. It won't scale and we can't live with that. So how does our data look like? Well, it's composed of several fields. First of all is the user and a tag indicating if it's a verified buyer or not followed by a star ratings, rating for one to five, and title and a content. Well, title and content are free text fields, obviously, which means they are highly unstructured. In fact, they're so free that this is a typical review. They're free of grammar, of correct English. We need to deal with it. So uh, let's establish a perspective on reviews. How should we look at a review? We look at a, review as a, at a review as a collection of opinions and topics, like customer service is rude and the shirt is amazing. Each opinion corresponds to a topic, which is in turn a collection of key phrases, like ship, shipment, delivery, shipping time, all are connected to shipping, which be, will be the representative for this group. I'll give you a quick overview of the solution and then we dive in. 
We first attract topics and opinions from a corpus, then detecting sentiment for each opinion, and finally, we'll capture interrelations between topics to form a more compound topics, which will allow a more comprehensive view of the data. So when you see your opinion, you can figure out that you have many adjectives and adverbs there. There are emotional verbs there, like I love, I appreciate, and there is sentiment there. We use all of this along with uh, dependency trees of reviews and other NLP methods to extract both opinions and the key phrases and topics they are talking about. Then we group synonymous topics or key phrases to find topic lists of candidates. And finally, we use statistical tools to filter out the irrelevant ones. Here are some examples. Uh, you can see what people saying about the website, some think it's easy to navigate, other, other things that are confusing. We want to reflect all of this opinion, not just the major ones, all of the opinions to give an holistic view of the data to our users. In, is there another example, a customer service? Some say it's prompt, responsive, others say there is absolutely no customer service. So now that we have key phrases and their matching opinions, let's move on to calculating sentiment. You might ask yourself, why do they need sentiment? They have labels, they have star ratings. Use them as a proxy. Well, you're partially right if you think so, but there are few reasons not to do that. The first one is the star rating is biased by user. Take me and my girlfriend. She has a kind heart, really and she never gives one star rating to anyone, even if the product sucked. On the other hand, I'm a more judgmental person. I don't ever give five reviews, as far as reviews. I think that there is always some room for improvement. Another thing in this point is that people often misfill the star ratings, giving a positive review with one star rating and vice versa. But the most important reason is that we have one star rating per, per review. And, and if a review can encapsulate different levels of sentiment, like the review right here, saying that the shirt is just amazing, shopping experience is the worst, and customer service is just rude. None of them is captured accurately by five, four star ratings. So I'll give a quick overview of how we calculate sentiment of a process we've been through. Then we model this uh, sentiment calculation by a two-class classification problem where our labels are derived from star ratings. We started with a benchmark uh, model using logistic regression. You might all know about it. The features are taking as bag of words over n grams, meaning that we don't care about the ordering of terms within a review, just their existence. The weighting scheme is term frequency. A term is given a weight as a number of times he actually appears in the review. Using this method, we've been able to reach 84% of accuracy on our data on a split uh, test set, evenly split. We looked for improvements and then found an interesting notion called delta IDF. It's another factor added to the, ter uh, to the weighting scheme. Namely, it is the log of the ratio of the probability of seeing a term given a positive view against the probability seeing that term in a negative view. Taking this term into a, this factor into account, we'll be able to reach 87% accuracy. For those of you who want to calculate sentiment and don't have much data in our hand, your hands, I really, really recommend using this score. It's pretty easy and the benefit is clear. As a Tiotpo, we have millions of reviews. We can go to, surprise, surprise, deep learning. I'll go over the network um, really quickly. We start with one hot vector representing terms, then embedding into a low dimensional layer, uh, dimensional uh, space using an embedding layer. 
then followed by bidirectional recurrent neural network built out of LSTMs, stacked over with two one-directional RNNs using Skipler connections to bring them all together to a final layer. Oh, sorry. Okay, with this model, we approached 94% accuracy, which is pretty cool if you know the business. Uh, our industry standards lie around 85% give or take, so we are really conditioned good in the sentiment analysis. Now, let's go and find interrelations between topics. So, we want to build compound topics in order to give a more comprehensive view of the data. We don't want our users to go and find keywords everywhere. So, we like to serve them, them together. In order to do that, we need to find some sort of measure to measure similarity or connectedness between key phrases. How do we do it? Another surprise, where to vec. Okay, now, for those of you who are not familiar with where to vec, word to vec is an embedding, which means it takes words from a vocabulary and transforms it or maps them into a vector space uh, each word to a vector. Now, the way it is done, it is a shallow neural network that actually maps phrases that share a common or similar surrounding or context to a point in space lying in close proximity to each other. So how do we use it? Well, I mentioned before, we have many small businesses, meaning that our corpora are not big. We need to cope with that. In order to cope with that, we do two things. First of all, we learn two embeddings. One, global learn for all, taking all YOTPO reviews, and then the other one is local, using just the account reviews. We additionally use some negative sampling in the local embedding. Since we don't need to make predictions with the model, it is okay, because it introduces bias. So let's take phrase A and phrase B, pass them through the embedding layer to get two pair of vectors, one from the global and other from the local. Then we calculate cosine similarity. Now we don't take it as is. We normalize it taking the similarity or the cosine similarity phrase A and phrase B has with other terms in our corpora. Bringing these sim cosine similarities to the approximately the same scale. And then we combine them together to find a unified score between phrase A and phrase B. Having these scores, we build a graph. Now we'd like to find subsets in the graph that are related key phrases. The nodes will be the phrases, and the edges will be weighted by the unified score we just calculated. Now, we don't want to impose any constraint on the size of each group or the number of groups. There are many techniques to do that. The best performing one for us was using community detection. So what is a community detection? It's taking a graph of nodes and partitioning it to groups or sets. They can overlap in general, uh, where each group is densely connected within itself and loosely connected to other groups in the graph. Then there are a few ways to find such communities. One of the ways is by looking at the modularity score. Let's go over it briefly. We have AIJ, the weight we just calculated between node I and node J, phrase I and phrase J. Then we subtract a term which is the expected weight if these two phrases were independent of each other. The bigger the difference here, the better we are. Finally, we have a delta function which indicates if node i and node j reside inside the same community. If they do, it takes the value one, otherwise zero. Obviously, we'd like to maximize this score though it's pretty computationally hard to do it, you can 
think about it. So we use an approximation method, namely the Louvaux method. It's a greedy approach, a bottom-up approach. It starts with really small communities, namely containing only key phrase each. And then repeatedly merge and divide the community where in each step we gain some extra modularity. We stop when we don't uh, gain uh, modularity at all or almost at all. Using this method, we'll be able to find groups and compound topics. I'll present to you some of them. So on the left, there are pretty obvious uh, groups we've received, like complaint, trouble, problem, and issue are globally related. And discount, sale, and coupon are globally related. Then we have industry-dependent groups, like for a fashion account, we extracted texture, fabric, and materials. We extracted many more groups. They are just a sample of them. And for a mattresses account, we have passing, top, uh, tossing, and bake group together. Some slightly different kind of detections are the following. On the left, we see a group composed out of grandson, son, nephew, birthday, and gift, and other phrases. I don't, didn't show it all. Now, this is a segment of buyers. There are, let me assume that there are more elderly people buying gifts to their younger relatives. This is, in fact, for a gadget store. Now, the store owner can immediately go click on these terms, see the opinions, drill down to the reviews, find those who likes, and publishing on social network targeting, targeting the exact audience here. And drive sales from my, I thought it's surprising uh, segment. Now, the example in the middle is for an account that conducts some charity activity you see terms that are related to the charity activities surfacing out and grouped together, like cause, charity, organization, and artist. You can drill down and see what think, why people think about the charity it does. The last one is more operation one, and namely it composed out of error, checkout, and PayPal. No, you don't have to be a genius. There is an error, the PayPal link, a checkout. No hard feelings, PayPal people. Now, what's neat about this example that it's derived by using only 30 reviews. There were only 30 reviews in a corpus of thousands that indicated this problem. Now, our user can drill down to see what browser is all about, can correct the problem and help his business in really immediate fashion. So just let me review what we've talked about. We took a corpus, make it more explorable and accessible. We did it by detecting topics and matching opinions, estimates and sentiment for each topic, and finally finding interrelations between topics to make data more comprehensive for the user. Thank you very much, everyone. If anyone wants to hear a little bit about our research at Yotpa, you are always welcome at the booth outside. Thank you. <laughs>